So, professional climate science denier Mark Morano has a new movie called Climate Hustle. He's promising that it'll rock the climate debate when it comes out in 2016. Here he is at the premiere in Paris in December 2015. And here's a bit of the trailer. Obviously, no climate science denial clip is complete without a demonic picture of Al Gore. All very scary stuff. Now, I've got a clip from Climate Hustle that was on the website of the film's production company. And it shows how Climate Hustle will just rehash old climate science denial myths. In this case, the argument that because carbon dioxide only takes up a small percentage of the atmosphere, that it can't have an effect on the climate. So let's have a look at the clip. This block represents man-made CO2. Okay, stop right there. That didn't take long. There are 400 parts of carbon dioxide for every million parts of the entire atmosphere. NASA's Gavin Schmidt tells me that about 112 of those were put there by us. So 0.0112% of the atmosphere is human-caused CO2, not 0.0012%. What's with the extra zero? It's only 3% of all the CO2 in the atmosphere. Hang on, hang on. That label there says natural CO2 is 0.04% of the atmosphere. That's not right either. We know about a quarter of all that natural CO2 isn't natural at all. It was put there by us. This isn't going too well. Now let's look at the rest of the atmosphere. Here's argon, only 1% of the atmosphere. Argon? What's that doing there? I thought this was about global warming. It's greenhouse gases we should be talking about, right? Argon's not a greenhouse gas. Oxygen, 21% of the atmosphere. Oh, dude, oxygen? That's not a greenhouse gas either. Hmm, I think I know where this is going. And nitrogen, 78% of the atmosphere. Nah, nitrogen's not a greenhouse gas. So, Professor Stephen Sherwood's thoughts are running down the bottom there. He calls this argument absurd and says the only way that a graphic like this works is if all the blocks that aren't greenhouse gases are clear. Gavin Schmidt says the most egregious fallacy of the whole clip is the implication that oxygen, nitrogen and argon have anything to do with the greenhouse effect, because of course they don't. Ok, let's limp along to the end. Does that small red cube really have such a large effect on the temperature of that sea of cubes? I'll leave that up to you to answer. Or you could ask an expert and then tell us. Without the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, too much heat would escape into space and we'd be a ball of ice. It's a nifty trick this. Make CO2 look tiny and irrelevant to the world's temperature by surrounding it with, well, loads of irrelevant gases. Sneaky and dishonest. Professor Michael Mann at Penn State University says that presumably these people would therefore argue that a concentration of hydrogen cyanide of 0.04% couldn't possibly be harmful, but in reality it's fatal. Just like the so-called science in this clip I suppose. Fatally flawed. <laughs>